Well, hello there. So, today, or rather tonight, uh, I'm going to show you a little demonstration of what this uh, Macintosh uh, Performa 6320 CD can do. Uh, honestly, it cannot do much, but yeah, it's, it's one of the uh, most quote-unquote multimedia-centered uh, computers from its time uh, when multimedia was you know the big thing just like these days it's you know buzzwords like uh, I don't know big data or AI or stuff like that um, artificial intelligence you know neural networks and all that crap that doesn't mean shit well multimedia was kinda the same thing in the mid 90s early to mid 90s Except it actually kind of did something because it meant, you know, you could listen to music on your computer, you could watch videos on your computer, which music and video, now we take it for granted that we can watch them, you know, digitally and all that stuff. But back in the day, um, music and video were things that were analog, strictly analog, you know, they, they were not in the, in the digital domain. So, you know, getting a computer which could play music and you could record videos onto and all that stuff was considered multimedia. And so, yeah, let's, without further ado, um, so I have a camera right there, plugged in, a uh, video camera. Uh, that's a VHSC camera uh, from around the same period of time as the computer. Computer was released in 1994. Um, the series of computers it, themselves, the 6200 and 6300 uh, Macintoshes, were released around 1993 or so. Camera is from 1992, 1993, uh, so it's sort of period appropriate. But yeah, let's turn the machine on. So let's start with the monitor. There we go. The lights flickered for a bit while it degaussed, and let's turn the machine on. So as you can see, it's not exactly the fastest machine in the world. Uh, it does take a while to boot up, and this is a rather clean installation of... Uh, well, it has a lot of extensions I installed. Maybe way too many, uh, but it's a rather clean install of System 761. But in a bit... and there we go, we're booted. So. Uh, we're running at uh, 800 by 624, I think, 840 by 624, uh, right now, thousands of colors, no, sorry, 256, uh, this doesn't do thousands, uh, let's get, I'm gonna get in front of the camera for a bit, there we go, so I can demonstrate this better to you, you're seeing the display, good, so, let's put this computer, as you can see, 761, hopefully you can see this, uh, yeah, you probably can. Software uh, 761. It's running maxed out RAM, so 64 megabytes. Let's take a look at the system profiler. See what it tells us about the computer. So, for Macintosh 6200, 6300 series. Uh, 603E at 120 megahertz, although it performs quite a lot worse actually than than a 603 at 120 megahertz should that's I explained that uh, why in my uh, hardware uh, tour there's no enabler active so apparently this machine needs no enablers uh, 64 mega RAM virtual memory is off of course I mean 64 megs is more than plenty for system 76 
Uh, it has open transport, which if I <laughs> if I had this machine networked uh, would be quite useful, but I don't have it networked yet, so yeah. You'll notice uh, I have a Macintosh HD uh, disk right here and an install. These are two partitions in the same uh, disk. That's because I uh, I am a bit cheap and I didn't want to install, uh, I didn't really want to get a, a CD-ROM uh, or a copy of macOS 7.6. Uh, to in to reinstall on this machine, and it came with a Finnish <laughs> version of of System 755, I think. And yeah, I don't understand Finnish, so what I did is I simply did two partitions in the disk, and I copied all the install files f for uh, macOS 7.6 on one of them from another computer, and I just installed it from there into the main partition which we're going to take a look at. Uh, I don't really have much stuff installed in this machine. Um, I have this Gage Pro uh, application which tells me well the specs of the machine and also look at that memory performance. 15.7 uh, megabyte a second, uh, that's ridiculous. Also notice uh, when, you when you move stuff around Huh, here, yeah, it doesn't do it now, but usually when you move stuff around, uh, like in the finder and all that, usually the memory throughput uh, suffers quite a bit. Uh, because, well, the architecture of this machine, uh, multiple buses cannot really be used uh, simultaneously. As you can see, it's a 603E, 40 MHz bus, it's quite awful. Uh, see, power max is 200. External cache, 256k cache on the motherboard. It's not on the motherboard. It's actually on a stick, but it's not operatable, so might as well be. Uh, yeah, there's that. As you can see, I have uh, uh, what was this called? N window shade, something like that, enabled. Um, what's it called? Window shade, yeah. Uh, I, I have it enabled because, well, I'm too used to Mac OS 9 uh, now, and yeah. Uh, apart from that, I'm using a Kensington mouse. Please. Two button uh, thingamajigs. So I also have a. Because I, I absolutely hate uh, the Apple mice that came with these machines. So I have the Kensington Mouseworks software installed. Um, they're really. It, it it's it's actually pretty nice, uh, pretty nice software. Like it it's impressive to see that you know software that comes with a peripheral isn't just bloat and it's actually useful. Uh, you don't see that these days. Uh, let's see. I don't really have anything installed. I installed the incredible machine here. I had never played it uh, prior to installing it on this machine, and I installed it only f uh, to demonstrate. Like sound capabilities and stuff on this machine, um, but yeah, let's run it. When we're in 256 uh, color mode, the although it in like transitions and stuff, it for some reason uh, changes to black and white color, like in the entire machine. But yeah, the the incredible machine. I mean, if if you haven't played this, go play it. Uh, Again, I haven't played it uh, before I installed it on this machine, but I'm finding it quite amusing, to say the least. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice game. I do think uh, we're having some graphical glitches, like when I tried to use bullies and stuff. Uh, belts, sorry. Uh, I don't think that's supposed to be like that. I do not think it is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, what do you expect? It's a game and it works, so yeah, let's not solve the puzzle, or maybe let's, uh, but honestly, I, uh, yeah, again, I haven't played it much, so I 
don't really know how this all works. I think this is the way you do it. Maybe it is. I don't know. Let's try it. Whoopsies. I fucked it up. Oh, no, there we go. Uh, yeah, seems like that's how you do it. Ah, uh, okay. I don't care about this anymore. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, that's possible for the second level. Uh, yeah. So that's about that. Now let's demonstrate some uh, multimedia capabilities. Uh, machine. Let's start by playing CDs, you know. That thing in the 90s, uh, CDs. I have this, which should be royalty free, shouldn't give me copyright strikes. Uh, this is an... I don't know. It's it's pretty much tracker music. Um, I got this thing from this CD from Bandcamp, I believe, or SoundCloud, something like that. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, let's open the CD tray. Uh, let's get you. Let's give you a little view of that. So we open the CD tray like so. We just drop the CD in and it'll start playing pretty much as soon as it detects that it is a uh, an audio CD and there it goes it's playing so yeah you can control the volume nope you cannot go with these uh, you have to use the Apple CD player which is this and there we go The speaker on this machine is actually uh, half decent, but yeah, the CD player is, you know, skeuomorphic as hell, as hell heck. Uh, it, I've seen worse, but you know, it has the sort of fake um, LED display and all that. You know, uh, you can skip tracks and stuff. I must say, uh, apart from this music being quite good, um, <laughs> uh, this music is not being played by the computer. This is actually being played by the CD drive itself. The computer is just piping it through the speaker. So <laughs> that means you can just ignore the CD player and you know do other stuff. Um, and the computer won't care. It, it, it's literally doing nothing uh, when playing a CD. It's it's just the the, the player uh, that's doing it. So yeah, let's eject it. There we go. Get that out of there. And now let's go to the video part of uh, this machine, which is. Possibly the most amusing um, of them, but first we have to change the display mode uh, to 6, 640 by 480. It won't work at uh, this resolution. So let's go to Apple Video Player, and there we go. We're on the video input since analog TV, uh, as you can see, the show controls. Um, we do not have, so the source is TV, video, or S video. Um, TV won't work. Uh, it's a TV tuner. The analog TV tuner, there's no more analog um, transmissions over here, so that won't work anymore. So we're, let's set it to composite. Uh, there we go. As you can see, we have some capture controls, and it says reducing the size of the win video window will improve the quality of a recorded movie. That is because, well, let's, uh, no, actually, that's not because I have. So, uh, the thing is, uh, you can change the size of the window, clearly. Largest size is pretty much full screen. Uh, but... Uh, the thing is, when you change the size of the window, it also changes the resolution of the recording. So, 
that means um, if you record in the largest size, it's going to record 640 by 480. Uh, this size, I don't know which size this is, but it'll be reducing stuff in resolution. And the thing is, the video quality is okay, and it would be uh, okay, the frame rate would be okay if this machine could handle it. It cannot. Uh, as explained in my previous video, uh, it can't really record video. It just uh, cannot uh, handle uh, modern, um, well, not modern, it cannot handle any frame rate. Uh, so it's it's not good at all. So let's, uh, let me get it back here. Uh, oh, look at that. There's my cat right there, but um, as you can see, I have a VHS camera right there, as I told you before. Uh, run from around the same time period. So let's get it running. Let's actually uh, turn it on. And you can see there, now we're getting video, or we should be getting video from our camera, which hopefully isn't acting up, but it is acting up. Oh well, I'll have to do this in a separate video. Wonderful. Uh, or maybe I'll just cut and I'll give you a preview. Thing is, the battery on the camera uh, doesn't seem to hold a charge, and for some reason it was holding it last week. Uh, but it doesn't seem to want to play ball uh, <laughs> today for some reason. Yeah, beautiful. So, yeah, let's do a little jump cut here. Alrighty, let's try this again. Um, so, camera's there. Let's try and turn it on. Hopefully it'll last a bit now. Okay, we do have video. Hopefully I can play a bit of a tape uh, for you. So you can actually see. And I think it is turning off. Yep. Yep, it is. No, it isn't. It is, is it? I don't know. Can I see anything through the viewfinder? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's not working. And sadly I left, uh, <laughs> I left the charger uh, in the workshop. So you'll have to, you know, believe me, <laughs> it, uh, it records video. Uh, it does record video. But yeah, this was kind of... The killer app. Uh, I, oh, I, I feel dirty now, I shouldn't have said that buzzword terminology thingy. But it was kind of the, you know, the selling point, the major selling point of this computer. Uh, being able to you know, record video from your camera and uh, watch TV and it seems like this computer was pretty much used as a TV uh, for the entirety of its life. It didn't really have much in the way of software installed. It did have some old recordings but that's, uh, that's pretty much all it had. It didn't have traces of being connected to the internet ever. Uh, it did have Stuff It uh, Expander installed so that makes me think that maybe at some point it might have been connected. But yeah. Again, uh, this machine, there's there's really nothing else to show you. It, it's the video capture and stuff. Um, it, it can do uh, frame grabs. And in fact, I have a picture of my cat uh, that I grabbed from that camera. Let me change this uh, back to... 832 by 624 right there and let's show you the picture of my cat which should be uh, pictures look at that I even made a folder and yeah 
this is the quality you kind of should expect from the uh, video capture. It's not bad at all, uh, considering this was recorded onto a VHS tape and then it was captured by this machine. It doesn't look bad at all. In fact, I, uh, I just turned it off uh, for the sake of, uh, you know, aesthetics and stuff. Uh, but I usually have this, that picture as my backdrop in this computer. So let's uh, go to the core, which is the program I use for setting backdrops in System 7. Because it doesn't come with backdrop support out of the box. And there we go. You can see my cat is now <laughs> the background of my computer. Uh, that must have been pretty kick-ass um, in the 90s. You know, having an actual digitized picture of, you know, whoever or whatever as your backdrop when, you know, your computer didn't even, the system didn't even support uh, backdrops um, from the factory. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. I, oh, I didn't benchmark the system. I have a uh, Norton or Nor Norton Symantec. I do believe this is last, the last version of System Info that uh, wasn't rebranded by uh, Norton. But I ran some benchmarks and this thing runs like crap. There's, there are literally uh, some uh, 68,000, well 68,040 uh, based machines that actually run better <laughs> than this. Uh, but yeah, it's, that's about it. Now, this machine can run up to, I believe, system, well, macOS 9.1. The factory version was 7.5.5. Uh, I'm running 7.6.1 because I think I, I wanted a System 7 machine. And yeah, honestly, this was a pretty good candidate. Um, and yeah, System 6, uh, even though it's, it was the first uh, paid version of the system and people didn't really like it because of that. Oh, I like it. I, I think it's a nice uh, upgrade to the Mac OS. Uh, it doesn't have, as you can see, it doesn't have contextual menus or anything like that. You still have to use the pull-down uh, menus for that. But, I mean, it works. Uh, even on this super compromised uh, machine, it runs quite quickly. I am actually very surprised at how snappy the UI is. I mean, certainly it's not my G4 upgraded uh, G3, uh, or Macintosh G3. It doesn't even come close. Uh, or, I don't know, that's not even a high-end system, like a dual processor MDD or something like that running OS 9. Uh, doesn't even come close to that, but for you know, the, all the limitations that this system has, which are many, many limitations, uh, I think it does run quite okay. Do we Acrobat? Look at that. Do we have any examples? Nope, this one opens a simple text. Hmm. Yeah, but as you can see, some things take quite a while to open. Even simple text, like a simple, you know, text document, it, it takes the system like 10 seconds or so but yeah so yeah I think that pretty much covers it uh, for the Performa uh, 6320 CD um, I would have liked to play uh, an MPEG uh, encoded CD uh, video CD but I do have some, uh, but they're copyrighted. They are very copyrighted, in fact. And, um, yeah, I don't know how to record them. I think you can use uh, Roxio Toast 
to make video CDs. Uh, but apart from that, I'm actually not sure. So, yeah. That's my cat in real life. She doesn't look too far off from that. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Let's shut this machine down and call it a night.